What's going on internet? IG here again today and I'm going to be talking about the much requested video editing workflow. So as somebody who edits video on Linux and does quite a bit of video production on Linux, I'm going to be going into the programs that I use and the, the sort of the way that I get from the footage that I take from a camera into a final product and then exporting it to, you know, YouTube or Vimeo or even DVD. You guys requested it a lot in the comments below on the digital photography workflow video, which will link will be in the description box if you haven't seen that already. And basically the idea of this series is just to give you guys a bit of a heads up as to what are some good apps out there to use if you're wanting to be productive on the Linux side of things. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously get the footage off your memory card onto your hard drive or onto an external hard drive or wherever it is that you're wanting to put the footage. And really this boils down to two things. You're going to want to keep it organized and you're going to want to keep it easily accessible. So that means one of two things. It means either using an app like Rapid Photo Downloader, which I've already talked about in my uh, digital photography workflow as a very uh, simple way to import footage off an SD card or photos into a folder hierarchy based on you know either date or time or maybe just based on the name that you give it. So you can check out that video for more details on how to use this but it's a very helpful application as far as putting your videos into folders and categorizing them based on the time or the date that they were taken. You can also batch rename and things like that as well which is also pretty helpful. But for those of you who have just pretty simple projects then it, copy pasting is about as easy as it gets. If you set up your own file hierarchy like I have here then you can dump all of the footage related to one particular event or job into one folder which is what I've done here. Then once you've got all that footage it's a pretty simple case of opening up your favorite video editor and for me on Linux this is Caden Live. It's the one that I've used for nearly all the videos on my YouTube channel to date and it's seemed to have done a pretty good job so far. So it's as simple as selecting all the footage that you're going to use, dragging it over and dropping it into Caden Live and then it will run through and try and create audio thumbnails of all of the footage that you've created as you can see it's doing here now and then you can arrange the clips on the timeline the way you please like you would with any other non-linear video editor. So I'm not going to be spending too much time on the actual video editing side of things but I will show you a project that I was working on not, not long ago to show you what a more complete timeline would look like. So here we have a video project that I worked on a few months back and you can see the clips are all over the timeline with lots of different sound effects and music tracks interspersed throughout them and also I did th throw in a few burns here as well and you'll probably notice that in some of the videos that I've done on this channel as well. But then once you're happy with your footage and how it's arranged on the timeline then you are going to want to render it and also I would advise saving it multiple times throughout the course of your job because while Caden Live does have an auto save feature it is not going to be enabled unless you actually create a save file to begin with. So if you start on a project and do not create a save file for it then if, if by chance Caden Live crashes which heads up it probably will then you're going to be screwed and your, all your work will be lost. But if you do create a save file, then chances are it'll be able to recover everything that you did up to the point of the program crashing, which is pretty helpful. Long story short, make sure that you create a save file and save regularly. Now the standard that I use for most of my videos is H.264. Again, the, your mileage is going to vary here depending on the destination of your video. As most of my video just ends up on the web, then I'm usually using H.264. Now there are some web, uh, there are some website specific profiles here uh, in Hayden Live's render settings. You can see here you've got YouTube, Vimeo and Dailymotion for up to 720p. If you wanted to go 1080p, you would have to create your own using the file rendering uh, option that I just showed you here before. So usually if I'm going to be putting something up on the web, I'm usually going to do between 2 and 4 megabits a second. You don't really need much more than that, especially for the type of videos that I do. But if you are chasing quality over file size, then you are definitely going to go, want to go 10 megabits a second and up. But if you do want to see quality in the YouTube videos that you're uploading, then definitely check out what their guidelines are and try and match the settings as close as you can to what they recommend. Now again, quick heads up about Caden Live as a program specific, you will want to make sure that if your machine has multiple cores, say four or eight, then you will want to make sure that the encoder threads takes up the maximum amount that you want it to take up. Because by default it will only use one core and rendering will take forever. Once you're happy with that and you've decided the file destination, you've set the cores and you've set the bitrate of the video and the type of video that you want to export, then a simple render to file is all you're going to need to do. And then you're going to end up with a groovy file in your video folder of the finished product.
Now, when it comes to the more artsy stuff like color grading and that, what I found to be good is to render out the video first with no with no color grading, with no flats in it, and as high quality as you can possibly manage. So for instance, go to lossless or high quality, choose one of these profiles, I use the H.264 again, render it out with the raw footage, so with no color correction or color grading, and then once you've once you're happy with that, and you're happy with the rough cut and overall look of the project that you've done, then you can re-import it in as a single clip into Caden Live and tinker around with the color settings. And once again, then rendering it out either through Caden Live or through an additional transcoder such as Handbrake. And your project will be ready for exporting onto the web. Now, if you wanted to create a DVD from the project that you've created, then Caden Live does have a DVD wizard built into the actual program, which is pretty helpful. But at the same time, I found that the quality that comes out of Caden Live's DVD wizard it leaves a little bit to be desired. And you don't have as much customization over the controls and over the way the DVD is presented. So what I recommend doing is rendering out the video in the highest quality format that you can possibly muster, then bringing that clip into a DVD authoring program such as DVD Styler. Then you can simply create a new DVD project tailored to your specific needs with a basic menu structure into the folder here ready to go. Then once you're happy with the DVD, simply burn the DVD and you're done. The most important thing to make sure when you're dealing with video is to match all of the profiles across as many, as many of the programs as you possibly can. For example, you're going to want to make sure that your, your project settings are matching very similar to the footage that you take. So if it's 720p footage at 60 frames a second, then you're going to want to select 720p at 60 frames a second. If on the other hand, you're trying to get a more cinematic look and you're doing 1080p to 24 frames a second, then you're going to want to select that. And then when you render out, it should automatically give you a 1080p option to match the projects, the project settings that you have. Now, if for some reason you do happen to mismatch the two, the first time that you do, Caden Live will tell you, and it will suggest a more suitable project settings profile. Now, of course, if you're gonna be uploading the video to the web, then the, then the last thing that you wanna do is create a thumbnail for your video. And for this, I've used GIMP. Now, as the standard thumbnail size for YouTube is gonna be 1280 by 720 p then that's the size of the canvas that you're gonna to wanna to use here. So if you say new and put in the width and height of the canvas size that you want, I've created a template here by thumbnail just to save me some time. And then once you're here, you can pretty much do whatever you like and create a thumbnail that's, that's suitable for the video that you're uploading. At the end of the day, it's pretty straightforward. Your mileage is gonna vary depending on what kind of project you're working on. But as long as you have an organized import, a clean editing experience, Experience with color correction or any other post-production stuff after the editing and an accurate export based on where you want the uh, video to ultimately end up, then you're pretty much right. And the finishing touches like a thumbnail or a DVD are pretty easy to bolt on after the fact. And yes, in case any of you are wondering, this, this is our Elementary OS Luna. Okay, so what do you guys think? Are there some apps that you would sub in for the ones that I used or any other recommendations that you might have? Obviously, it really depends on what you're doing and, and the sort of thing that you're doing as to what apps or what tools you're going to use over uh, in preference to another. If you can find a workflow that works for you, then more power to you. So let me know if there's any other workflow videos that you think I should look into. I've got a few ideas in mind as well, but we'll see where they go. As per usual, Linux distro reviews and app reviews will continue to come hopefully. And also let me know in the comments section below of a good KDE distribution, because right now I'm compiling a list of solid KDE distributions that I want to compare to each other to try and find the best KDE distribution of this year. So let me know in the comments below on that one or on Facebook, Twitter, or Google Plus or wherever it was that you saw this video. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and I shall see you in the very near future. Peace out.